Hello! Welcome to Code Zero, a series of videos that explores the world of code. My name is Pragma. Have a great time learning about code. Hello! Thank you for that nice introduction, Pragma. This is Dr. Abstract here at ZimJS.com, and uh, welcome to Code Zero. We're going to dive into the code again, but as I was reviewing the videos from the last Code Zeros, I noticed that we were throwing around these properties, um, things like rotation and position and so forth, without maybe introducing them from a code zero standpoint. So let's just, before we move on to events, which we were going to move to, let's just make sure that we've um, taken a good look at properties. Sometimes properties, uh, we use them so often, I've used them for so many years, that I forget that not everybody knows what alpha means and you know, that, that kind of thing. So from a code zero standpoint, let's just back up a bit and take a look at some of the things that we were doing to this rectangle. Now, if you recall, we had some code. Let's just view this in a browser. We were working with a dial and a circle, and we were changing the scale of the circle, that scale. And again, maybe you don't quite get what scale is. So I'd like to introduce some of these basic properties, the transformation properties, uh, properly in this code zero. And we'll do that with this rectangle. Sometimes things like rotation with the circle is tricky to see because if you rotate the circle, you don't see any, <laughs> any change. So we'll use the rectangle, um, and which means we'll let's get rid of these other things and we'll feature the rectangle. So um, maybe what we can do is, that's, that was all about chaining, is I'm just going to copy the rectangle stuff. We'll come right up to the top, or just underneath where it says put your code here. I'm going to say that we will deal with properties. And let's just um, add that one to the stage. Well, what we'll do is we'll center that on the stage. So it's nicely centered on the stage, our rectangle. And then we will just comment that out so that we no longer add this rectangle with all of its chaining. We will do the same to the circle. So here's the circle centering on the stage. I don't want to see you, I'm afraid and the dial, instead of adding the dial to the stage, we'll comment that out. So that's comments to just stop seeing the other objects that were around. We can always bring those back later if we need to. So, oh, that was the, that one. Okay, so here's ours, we'll move that down a bit. So, there it is, a plain rectangle centered on the stage, and let's just see what we've got now when we take a look at that and refresh. There it is. It's black by default and has, I don't know, a width and height of 50 or 100 or something like that. All right. Now, uh, properties are something that would describe an object it's, or something that the object has. It's like an adjective. So a color would be its property. Its width and its height are its property. And there are basic transformation properties, they're called. And that is the, the following. Oops, tab. Um, things like uh, scale. Well, let's start with the easiest one. X, comma, and Y are its positions. Scale X and scale Y are its scales. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have the skew, this is sort of more rare case, but skew x and skew y are its skew. We've got something called a registration point, so reg x and reg y, registration points. Um, one might think that there be a width and a height here, but we'll get to that in just a second. And uh, alpha is a, a basic property as well that we can use. So all display objects will have all of these things. So this is its position, uh, its scale, its skew. So that's how much it kind of uh, angles in a sense. Um, so uh, like like the italic font angles, you know, actually this is a slight italic when it's in comments here. Um, the registration X and registration Y is when we place something at an X and Y, this is the place inside the object that actually um, corresponds with this X and Y. 
Uh, that's almost a code zero on its own. So probably in this code zero, I don't think we'll get too much into the registration reg registration why because um, that's uh, tricky and, and a little complex. And we have some good tools to deal with that. And But that would make a great code zero. So perhaps we'll leave that for its own. And alpha is quite easy. That's how transparent it is. So let's see what these things look like then. Now these are the basics. Now Zim's come along and added a few more things to that. Uh, one is width and height. Now, as you can imagine, the width and the height of it are very related to the scale of it. So how CreateJS, and indeed sort of the base canvas, the HTML canvas, how they treat it is there is no width and height. You make something, um, and it might, uh, I'm not sure how you give it a width and height. Like when you create the shape, it draws the shape with the width and height you tell it, but after that you never change the width and height, you only change the scales. Um, I, I come from a, a Flash background with interactive media and in Flash we were given a width and height also scale X, or scales, scale X and scale Y. Um, now note that they have broken it down into X and Y in a couple cases, or three cases here, for the scale, the skew, and the registration, and there is no scale. Uh, recently, though, um, CreateJS has added a scale. I used to have one in Zim, too. We used to have a scale in Zim, but we took that away because CreateJS was providing a scale property for us that will combine, do the combination of these. And that used to bug me in Flash for years, so as soon as we started Zim here and had an opportunity to make our own scale, we did, and uh, no longer did we have to apply to scale, you know, nor, you know, if you scale a, a rectangle or something like that, often, or a picture, which is rectangular, often you want to scale both the X and Y at the same scale so that we don't stretch it. And we would always have to say, uh, you know, use both of these and it was a pain. So both CreateJS and Zim, we've now made a way that we can scale with one thing. Same with skew and same with reg. And even same with X and Y, so if we um, want to position it with just one call, we can. Now that might seem a bit strange, but the way we do that is by instead of using properties, which these are, we use methods to set the properties. So let's see all that in for real. Uh, first of all, things like the X and Y, um, or sorry, the, uh, the width and height, can be made by passing in by one when we create the thing, and they're not really properties. They're it's using parameters to to set up the rectangle, uh, but properties are something that can be accessed after either by reading or by changing, um, and so it's not necessarily everything that we when we make something. Not everything that we use to make that something will turn into properties later. So let's give you an example here. We would go a rectangle and we would give it a width and height. How about um, 200 comma 100? So it's wider than it is high. And then we can give it a color frame dot pink, punk, <laughs> the punk color. And we'll center that rectangle on the stage. And we refresh here. And there it is. So it would be up to the coder or whoever built this rectangle, uh, which happened to be me and Zim, whoever built this rectangle, it would be up to them what to provide as properties that you can change later. So to change something later, let's uh, we, we could chain things on, but if we're dealing with properties, uh, real uh, properties, I guess, uh, just plain properties here, then we uh, do not chain that. So var rect is equal to a new rectangle centered on the stage. And let's take a look at some properties. So you can get a property and you can set a property. Most of them you can do both. Sometimes you can only get a property. Uh, very rarely can you only set a property. Uh, but anyway, let's um, let's get a property. Uh, to do that, we would ask for it. So we would go zog rect.x. And so this is act 
asking what is the x position of the rectangle and it will tell us something nearby the middle of the stage so we refresh there and f11 oh not f11 f12 to get our console and it tells us 412 pixels so what that means is this rectangle is positioned at 412 pixels and uh, across here so that's 412 pixels now 1024 is how big the stage is so that's 1024 divided by 2 is 512 so 512 would be in the center of the stage and then this is back 412 which is 100 from the center of the stage so here's 512 there's 412 so yeah that looks about right wouldn't you say because we're 200 wide, so if we centered it, it would be 100 to the left of the... So that's the X. The Y would would be, you know, we do the same kind of thing to get the Y. And we can set this. So let's set the X to be 0. Rect.X is equal to 0, like that. And now we're changing the property. We're setting the property and refresh. Now the rectangle is placed at position 0. Okay, so I'll just comment that out. So that's X and Y. Um, next, why don't we take a look at the scale, I suppose, since we've got it there. Um, we can zog the scale, rect.scale. Uh, X, that is. Rect.scale X, although CreateJS now has a scale, so I haven't really tried around that. It kind of surprised me they added it. Uh, I think a little bit later, unless I just never knew about it. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I started getting error messages. So with CreateJS 1, when they launched that, they also added a scale thing. And then I was getting these conflict messages because Zim had a scale as well. And so things were messing up. Scale of 1. So we don't set a scale. The default scale is 1. If we don't set an X, by the way, the default X is 0. So if we... Uh, did not center this on the stage, but just added it to the stage, it would be placed at 0, 0. Do you want to see that? So if we just add to the stage and refresh here, there it is up in the corner at 0, 0, and it's telling me the x is 0, and it's telling me the scale is 1. So that, that's all the defaults, and the rotation is 0 as well. So let's just check the rotation. Oh, that's the one I forgot. Rotation. I knew there was another one in there, so rotation is the other... Uh, let's put that one right up top here. It's one of the main ones, rotation. So when traditional programming talks about uh, it's transformation property. So we're primarily looking at transformation properties. So this is how we can transform this. We can transform its position, its scale, its skew, and rotation is another big one. Which I totally forgot. Sorry about that. I knew there was one there. Registration I'm not sure if they call that an official transformation property, I suppose, because that would be the point around which we scale and rotate. And I'm not sure if skew, no, I think skew is independent of registration point. Alpha is not really a transformation property either, but it's, um, it's very basic, so we'll talk about that as well today. Okay, so there's the rectangles X being zonged, the rectangles scale X, scale Y would be the same. How about, uh, do you want to just check the rotation? Zog rotation. Well, maybe we should actually set the scale before we go here. Rotation, we can do it. So if we zog rotation just to see that that will be zero as well. And, oh, row. <laughs> Still spelled wrong. Zog rotation. Oh, I didn't spell it wrong. It needs to be whose rotation is it? Zog the Rex rotation. And there it is. So that's its default X, default scale X, default rotation. And we can see that is indeed true. Let's go back to centering then on the stage so we can just see it a bit better. And let's try setting the scale. So now if we go. Uh, rect.scale x is equal to 2, that will mean that its scale will be twice as big as it was before. So if we refresh here, there it is. So it used to be that big, and now we've scaled it. 
one thing that would help us view this, and I, it's a little bit tricky because I, I do want to do the registration points later. I think it would be too long a code zero if we do that. But there's a thing called a um, dot outline, and that's a way that Zim provides. It is uh, a way that Zim provides a way <laughs> to show the bounds of an object as well as its registration point and origin. So we refresh here. And it's a snapshot in time. So initially, when we called outline, it outlined it at that time to be right here. Then we scaled it. So now it's scaled, but note the outline doesn't go with it. So the outline is like a snapshot in time. If we wanted to, we could have outlined it after we scaled it. So rect dot outline, like so. So now we're centering it, we're scaling it, and then we're outlining it. Now, since it's a slap, slap shot in time, <laughs> scores! Now, since it's a snapshot in time, we would expect the outline to move uh, over the whole thing, which it does. So now it's showing you this is the outline of it now that it's been scaled. But do you see, if, if we put it up here, it's a little handy, isn't it? Dot outline. If we put it up there, it's handy because we can see the scale happening. Yes. We refresh here, and we can see that this is what it looked like initially, and then we've scaled it to, to two, so that means it's twice as big. And now watch this one. How about a minus two? What do you think that will do? Well, it'll flip it. So now what's happened is it's scaled twice as big in the minus, so what it does is it just sort of flips the thing. So that's how you can flip something. If we just wanted to flip it at the same size, then we would say one, like so. So now that's it flipped. And if we remove the outline, it would just look in reverse. So if you had an image and you wanted to flip it, just scale minus one, we'll flip it. And you can approach, you can do a, a scale of zero. Here's a, a scale of minus 0.1. So now it's going to be squashed. And now remember, we're doing the scale x only. So now we've sort of squash that rectangle into the minus 0.1. And you can animate the scale too. Here's um, a plus 0.5. Uh, you can imagine if you can animate this, uh, then you would see the scale change. So it's quite easy to animate. So here would be a progress bar animating rect dot. Can do it. Uh, we won't start with a scale of 0.5. Actually, let's start with a scale of zero scale x of zero so now we won't see it it would actually scale and squash that so we don't see it then we say rec dot animate and here we say that we want to animate the scale oh x so the scale x to one and we can do that in one second or something like that so this will animate the rectangle scale back to one in one second, that's milliseconds. And we refresh here, and whoop, here it goes. Isn't that neat? Whoop, so that's animating the scale. Any of these properties, transformation properties, we can animate, which I'd often do. Okay, so we don't want a scale of zero, and now there's also a scale Y, so let's set the scale Y to uh, five or something and see what this looks like. There it is, and that's very big. Now, note that the rectangle centers, so the Zim center uh, method will center the rectangle, but it's no longer centered. Oh, that's too bad. Well, if we wanted to scale it first and then center it, we certainly could do that. So if we just move this up, uh, let's see, I suppose we have to end that statement and go rect.scale y and then bring back the rect here, like so. So what we're doing is we're making a rectangle, we're scaling it in the y so that it's bigger, then we're centering it, and then we're outlining it as well. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, works just fine. So the outline goes on the whole thing now because we did that after we scaled it. It is, as you can see, it's centered on the stage. So center is also like a snapshot. It doesn't remain center. It centers whatever the shape is at the time. So um, there we go. All right, well, let me just undo that. Now, did you note that we had to do some 
uh, adjustments there to be able to scale that and then center it, we can no longer um, do our chaining. I don't know if I was chaining. Uh, but one nice thing about chaining, and we'll get to this, is all of these things can be chained. So we don't have to, you know, have, have these kind of problems where I can't remember what we were doing before. Oh, yes, we were chaining. So we took the rectangle, we dot centered, so we chained it, and we outlined. Really, if I just wanted to chain on the scale, I could go dot ska. So scale has a short form chainable like that. We wanted uh, we wanted to set the y. So this means that this means the x scale. So that's like scale x, and this one is the scale y. And so if we set that to say five like that, what this means is scale our rectangle one in the x, so normal in the x, so it'll still be 200, but five times in the y. And now we can do that with chaining, so we don't have to do what we just did before where we put a property in here and then come back to you know another statement, etc. And if we do that, refresh here, uh, I guess it looks the same. Let's change that to four and see if it gets slightly smaller. Refresh, there you go, okay. So that's working, but how about we come back to the chaining in just a little bit. We'll go back to the, uh, the straight properties. So we did lose our example for um, chaining a scale. Rect dot scale x is equal to 5, I think was our example. So we'll just leave that commented. We'll leave our animation commented, and let's take a look at rotation. So there's the rect dot rotation. We found it was zero, but we can set that by saying rect dot rotation is equal to how about 45. So that's in degrees. And let's see what that does. Let me refresh here. So here's where it was originally, and then we've rotated it 45 degrees. Now, quite simply, that rotates around its registration point, and like I said, we'll deal with registration point in another uh, code zero. Okay, so that's 45 degrees. You can also animate the rotation as well. So that's rotation. What else have we got? Let's comment that out. Uh, you can also animate or rotate in a negative direction. You can ask for the rotation and so forth. So, all right, great. Uh, how about the skew, I suppose. So we've commented that out, and now we go rect dot skew uh, <laughs> rect dot skew x is equal to 20. And let's see the effects of a skew. There it is. So it takes it and it skews it. I can't remember exactly what 20 means. It might mean 20. We, we, we could check. What if we skew at 45? Is that the degrees it's skewing or is it by that many pixels? Yeah, it looks like the degrees. So it's skewing at 45 degrees um, and that's the effect. And the skew y would look like this. Skew in the y direction, and then it looks like that. So 45 degrees in the y as opposed to 45 degrees in the x. Okay, I sometimes will take text and skew it. Uh, if if I don't want to set an italic on the text, you can just skew it. The, setting an italic on the text will look better, especially if you do this thing called caching the text. But sometimes you've got a whole thing, like you put the text on a box and you want the whole box and the text, you know, you've got some sort of timer going and you want that to be skewed to look a little bit more dynamic, you know. So then I might just take that whole container that has the, the box and the text and skew it and it looks kind of cool as a quick effect. Okay, so that was skew. Next is the alpha. Where'd it go? So we talked about skew, rotation, scale, uh, the regex, and the alpha. Okay, let's talk about the alpha next. We'll comment out skew. And we can zog the alpha. Zog alpha. And remember, a zog is just like console.log, but it shows up in the console. It's only for us to find out what's happening with our code. Nobody else would see that. 
oh, I did the same thing as before. <laughs> You're supposed to say, no, 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 wait. You need to put who's alpha, the rex.alpha. So let's see that. And we refresh here. And it tells us one. So that's at full alpha, which means we can't see through it. That's as high as it goes. If you set the alpha to two or five, it just still looks like it's one. It won't go any higher. Um, so alpha is between zero and one. If we go and try that, uh, I think we already set the rec of the alpha somewhere, or sorry, the <laughs> alpha of the rec somewhere um, to be 0.5 in the, the last example. We may have done that with the, the alp method, but let's just try it here. Oh, with the traditional property. That's not a property that's, I'm so used to now using the alp method and getting mixed up. So very rarely am I actually dropping back to the traditional property calls now. I'm almost always um, using the Zim methods for setting these. So we'll show you those in just a bit. We're almost there. So rect.alpha equals 0.5. That would be traditionally how we would do that. And a refresh and you can see that the rectangles alpha has gone down and we can go 0.1 so we can you know hardly see that. And there it is hardly you can't tell as well because we've got the out or the um, so what's it called again the outline. So I'm going to comment out the outline there and refresh here. Oh, can you see that? I suppose so, right? Now we have to be a little bit careful with the alpha. If you say an alpha of zero, that you know works great. I can't see it, but no longer will we be able to interact with that. So if we set the uh, the drag, for instance, of the rect dot drag like so and refresh here um, I can't drag it I, I don't even see that it's there so it's not you can't interact with it but you can interact with an alpha 0 0.01 that's about as faint I think as you can get anything less than that and doesn't seem to interact on it so I don't know if you can see that there, but I can actually drag the thing that I can hardly see. And there's been times at certain colors where, you know, you can kind of just see a faint outline of what's there. All right, we'll go back to a 0.5, for instance. So I can see what we're doing here. So there's us dragging it. So if without, now there is um, one thing you can do to actually drag an alpha of zero is you can set what's called uh, the well uh, we've got a method in Zim it's called the hit area but we just say expand like so expand and you can specify by default it will expand 20 pixels on both sides you can choose you know 40 pixels or 49 let's choose 49 in the Y, that expands it 49 pixels in the Y and 20 pixels in the X. Um, that's just for, say, you're making something for mobile, you've got something small, and you want it to be some the user to press on it with their finger, but you can't press it, like it's too small to press on. You can use this expand, and if you expand with zero, this is zero in all four directions, then the expand applies this uh, thing called a courageous hit area. And even if your rectangle is alpha zero, so let's set that back to alpha zero, uh, we'll still be able to drag it. So we save, save that, save that, and refresh here, like so. And there it is, no alpha at all. I can't see it, but I can still drag it and interact with it because it's been expanded and it has this hit test or no, hit area it's called. You can look into the CreateJS hit area, but I, I prefer using the expand. It's a bit easier. With the CreateJS hit area, you have to make a rectangle and then or some shape and set that to be the hit area. Okay. Uh, let's not do any of that, though. And, well, we'll comment that out just so that we have... Oh, wrong, wrong side. Comment out that out. And I'm not really wanting to drag it. And let's go back to the outline as well on it. We're going to try uh, the registration point thing. So there's Zogs, Zogs, great. There's our alpha. We don't want an alpha of zero, so I'll set that to something like 0.5, and then we'll comment it out because we're done with alpha. Registration point. 
So if we just take a look now, I don't want to get too much into this. We'll just go quickly because um, there's a lot of nuances with it. This round circle rec represents the registration point and you can adjust the registration point. So by default, the registration point, zog reg x. Oh, haha, who's reg x? The rex reg x, I remember that time. Did you remember too? And it tells us the registration points is zero. Hence, within this rectangle, you see that cross? That cross represents zero, zero. And this is saying that that round circle is at position zero in the x relative to that. So let's set it to 200. So that means we would take this circle and we put it right over here like that. Okay, so we're just set the reg x so it goes over here. Now what happens is the reg x, this round circle then, will be where the rectangle is placed. So currently the rectangle is placed, uh, oh, uh, no, it won't because, well, yes it will. We've centered it with its registration point here. So as soon as we later on adjust the registration point, what's going to happen is this whole box will shift over so that the circle's right here and the rest of the box is over here. Okay, like I said, this is tricky and I don't want to go too much into detail. We'll just do this and that's all. <laughs> I swear. And, and then we'll, we'll do another um, code zero on all the rest of that registration point stuff. Okay, so we say rect dot reg x is equal to the width, which is 200. And we'll talk about the width too. I should talk about the width and height after we do this. Let's do a little reminder there. Let's talk about width and height. <laughs> there so we don't forget. All right, there we go. We've set the reg x to 200, which happens to be, if you recall, the width of the rectangle. And we refresh here. And there we go. That's where it was initially. Now it's it's over here. Okay. If we were to outline this afterwards, it would look a little bit different. Let's outline it afterwards. So we'll take the outline from here. We'll comment that out. Oot, oot, comment the outline, oot. We'll come on down here and where did we set the reg? And then we'll say rect dot, no, I had the dot, dot outline. And let's see what that looks like now. There it is. So there's the zero, zero within the box. We've moved the registration point over to here. And then since the X and Y of the box is whatever, the same amount that it was when we centered it, like here and here, um, the registration point, the, this whole box gets picked up and moved so that the registration point is at the X and Y of the box. Okay, like I said, that's all we're going to talk about with registration point for now. Uh, there's lots more examples that I can show you that sort of help you understand what was going on there. Um, and that, that can be one of the trickiest things within the transformations here is the registration point. So let's leave that for another one. Um, width and height. Okay, so let's comment out this stuff for the registration point. And we'll bring back the other outline. Now let's talk about width and height down here. Uh, if we zog the width, let's see what we get. Oh, <laughs> zog whose width? Ah, my goodness, I forgot to do that each time. Must have something to do with this particular type of lesson. So if we zog the rectangle's width, let's see what we get. 200. So it tells us 200. Now, in CreateJS, if we just made a CreateJS rectangle, it has no width property. What we would have to do is ask for, and we can do that here too, the rex.getBounds, which is a method. So getBounds will calculate how wide that rectangle is, and then we go dot .width, like that. So it's getting the width property of the bounds of the rectangle. And if we do that, it's going to tell us the same thing, I hope, yeah, 200. Now, there are times when this may or may not be like, so that's what we've done, but it's tricky because depending on things like, um, oh, let's see, scale, this, this might change. 
So what we've done in Zim is we've just, uh, I think we've tried to represent it as best as possible. So for instance, if we scale it, so let's bring back the scale. Where was the scale? There's skew. So rectangle.scalex, and let's just say, yeah, okay, five. So scale x is five. And now if we ask for rect the rect.getbounds.width, let's see what it says. So we save this, refresh. It still says 200. So the width of the rectangle's bounds is still 200, and then we scaled that so that it seems bigger. So that's a strange answer for a width, kind of, because it's no longer that wide. So in Zim, we did these calculations as best we could, and I think we've done them. So let's uh, zog what rect.width is. And now this won't tell us 200. It will tell us 200 times 5, which is 1,000. So we save that, and we refresh here. Refresh. And there's the width of it, 1,000. So that's good. And we can do it in reverse as well. We can set the width. So um, no, let's say rect.width is equal to, I only want it equal to 50, please. And so now this will set the, the width of the rectangle to 50. There it is. Now note that when we did that, it took the proportion of the rectangle and made it so that the width is 50. Let's take a look. What have we got here? Oh, I know. we zogged the rectangle's width before that. Um, but let's zog these two things afterwards and see if the width is actually changing the bounds or if it's not. Okay, so, well, presumably if we set the width to 50, this is definitely going to say 50, but we're not sure what this will say. I suspect it will say 200. So we refresh. It still says 200, but our width is replying with 50. Okay, so in other words, us setting the width is not actually changing the bounds of the width. Uh, or sorry, the, the width of the bounds. One question is, how can we set just the width instead of, or set just the width rather than both the width and the height? Let's change both the width and the height as we did that. Well, here we have a way, we could do that with um, a thing called size, S-I-Z. It's a short form chainable method. Um, it would work the same way as an HTML image. This kind of does as well, but there is a property called width only. Width only that you can set. Uh, you say, please set the width only to 50. And so let's see what that would look like now. Refresh. There, the height is the normal height, and then the width only is, is 50. So same with height. We've got that as well. All right. Well, we're getting on in time here, and I do want to sort of just show you the chainable versions of all these properties. We've gone through all of them, have, have we not? I think so. Comment that out. Let's just make sure. So we look up here. X, Y, scale, skew, rotation, reg, and alpha, yes. And then we also looked at the width and height, which for some reason is down there. And we looked at the width and height. Okay. Oh, I had said that width and height were passing in there. <clears throat> That's fine. So you will find that all Zim display objects have a width and height property that is really using the scale. So all that's doing is trying to figure out what scale to apply to make it that many pixels wide and, or high. Okay, so we're changing the scale. We're not really physically changing the bounds of it. So you need to be a little bit careful there. So that gives us all of those basic properties that we've taken a look at. And what we'll do is we'll end the code zero here. Uh, we will start a new code zero that shows how we can do the same types of things with the chaining methods. All right, does that sound good? So uh, ciao from Dr. Abstract and uh, uh, goodbye from Pragma. Pragma and I are going to a movie soon, so we'll cut it off here, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Ciao!